Hello everyone, I'm James Milan and this is Check It Out, our series with the Robbins Library and we are with the library director, Anna Litton. Anna, always fun to be here. Always pleasant to chat with you as well. Yeah, well I'm going to remind you now of the last time that we were talking yes. in this space. Um, you know, I think that there, we, we know what dog years are, right? Yes. There should be a specific designation of years for people doing more, two jobs at once, et cetera. Exactly. In which case, we were here 100 years ago. Very true. Let's say, yeah. or else last summer, one or the other. Um, obviously, um, at that time, we were talking about the transition from Andrea Nikolai, our former library director, to you. And, uh, you know, I remember you looking a little bit like, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> So I'd like to start today. Just how has it been? How's it been for these six, seven, eight months in, yeah. in calendar time? Yeah, it was definitely a long transition period, uh, a lot to learn in a short amount of time. And I'm just so grateful for our town manager, Sandy Pooler, and his wonderful team. I'm so grateful to Karen Malloy and the team at the Human, Serv at the Human Resources Department, and of course, to the fantastic team here, as well as the most excellent uh, board of library trustees here, who really helped me get up to speed, ready. And um, since we just met last, we have hired an assistant director. Amanda Troja has joined us. She came to us from actually the Fox Branch Library, where she was the branch manager. And she has stepped in and just really ready to go here. And it's um, I'm really looking forward to the future, kind of putting behind a learning period, entering the time to take some of what I've learned and put it into action. Mm -hmm. And I have to, I, I do remember uh, talking to Andrea when you were hired and mm -hmm. how happy she was, uh, yes. uh, again, to be able to share what is a, a lot of responsibility within within this facility. Yeah, our assistant director here is responsible for a lot of our uh, programming and a lot of our communications. Mm -hmm. So the way that we communicate with the community here in Arlington is so important to us. We want people to know about the services and programs available here. So it's just really wonderful to have someone whose real job is to take care of that work back with us. Excellent. Um, I want to start our conversation today by talking about the fact that we are here in mid-February. February, as we know, is Black History Month. Um, I know that you have displays um, around the library and probably have made other kind of accommodations or recognition uh, of this particular month. Gets me thinking about the issue more generally of diversity. And so I want to start with the diversity audit, audit that was done uh, around the town. And I know that the library had a part in that and I was also taking things away from that. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, thank you so much. What a great question. Uh, we are always looking for ways to build a more inclusive and equitable library to support our diverse community. Um, and we see the town's equity audit as a great opportunity for us to assess our programs, our collections, the ways that people access our services to make sure that we are truly serving the library as well as we can. So uh, your examples about our Black History Month uh, displays, perfect. We easily do that. We do that all the time. And we're always looking to what can we build, what can we add to um, make this library a central focus for all of the residents in our community. So I can think of a couple of examples of ways that we've approached uh, building a more inclusive and equitable library recently. Last year, we conducted a collection audit uh, to really help us examine our nonfiction collection. Are we providing the resources that the community might need? If you have real interests in learning more about indigenous communities, do we have the resources mm -hmm. that will support that learning? So we have been taking that in for, you know, that's, a, that's an ever-changing process for us. How we look at our collections, making sure our collections meet community research, entertainment, and education needs. And that's been a, just a fantastic process, being able to have that audit and really help us understand where are we hitting the mark and where are we missing the mark. Mm -hmm. um, Another piece that's been really nice is, of course, we are always reassessing our programs. Are we providing the programs that the community members want, need, and are excited to come to? And we're launching a new program for kids this year. I'm very excited about this one. 
Our Rainbow Readers Program welcomes kids who, uh, LGBTQ plus kids in many different ways. However a child might identify, however the child's family might identify. Um, kids frequently have access to family play groups for LGBTQ families. Um, but what happens when the child gets a little older? So our new Rainbow Readers program is geared for kids who are in third to fifth grade mm -hmm. and really welcoming them in an environment that feels good, feels comfortable, and where kids get to read books that really address these issues. Mm -hmm. um, so this is another example of ways that we look at our programs and make sure that, again, our programs are needing the needs of our diverse community here in Arlington. Mm -hmm. I d you know, I, I, I have often said on this show and in other, whenever I have the chance in talking to you and to your predecessors, you know, how much I love the library, but how beloved an institution it is within the community, how cherished, how valued, um, it, it, and how well used it truly is. But it's great to hear that on the other side, you guys are intensely aware of that kind of responsibility to the community and also just have a whole bunch of processes in place to make sure, like you said, that the programs you're offering, the books that can be found and other resources that can be found here, um, you know, really do serve the community's needs and interests. Um, we assume that, I think, um, but we don't realize necessarily how much paddling under the water needs right. to be done, right, in order for that to keep, keep up to to speak yeah, to and for that, of course, I need to thank our amazing staff that these, the two examples that I shared with you, the uh, collection audit and this new program, the Rainbow Readers program, these were really program, these were concepts that were originally generated by staff members here who, were, who saw a need in our community and helped us meet it. So um, our staff, again, wants to make sure, we can't rest on our laurels, we can't rest on people, people do love libraries in general, and I'm so happy about that, but your love for libraries should be, I don't wanna say, love should never be conditional, but your love <laughs> for our library should be based on your current experience of our library. Mm -hmm. So it is our responsibility to make sure that your experience today, when you come to the library, meets your needs and that the library offers uh, the programs, the services, the collections, the kinds of spaces that you need. And uh, I, yeah, I have to thank my staff for always keeping an eye on that and making sure that we are evolving as our community changes. Well, one crucial component of diversity that I know that you are very aware of and that we haven't yet mentioned, of course, we've been talking about the diversity in the offerings and the collection, et cetera. But then there's also diversity in terms of people walking in and seeing other folks who either look like themselves or being, you know, again, served by, in the way that librarians can do for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I assume that that is also a priority for you guys moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So we there's a lot of different ways that we see our community and want to welcome diversity into our community. And I think uh, first about um, our staff and our support people. So we have we have a fantastic staff here. Um, we when we are hiring for a new position. We really want to see if we can find a candidate who really does support, um, represents our diverse community. We want people who come through our doors to understand that um, that's a priority for us. Uh, that's an issue that we have not fully resolved. I would not say we have hit our mark mm -hmm. in hiring a, uh, a super diverse staff here, and it's something we're always continuing to an area where we would like to improve. Mm -hmm. um, I think about our wonderful support group. So uh, as an example, two of our support groups, the Friends of Robbins Library and the Arlington Libraries Foundation, uh, those are again groups where uh, they want to build, welcome the diversity of Arlington into their groups and using that, in for, using that diversity to help them build more diverse programs and ideas moving forward as well. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my favorite things about Arlington is how much we do acknowledge our community members, all of our community members, and how much we truly want to uh, make sure that everyone feels included here in the library, in our support groups, and make sure that our, the experience that everyone has with the library feels representative. Mm -hmm. And I do think that 
uh, that's an ongoing, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just an yeah. ongoing challenge. Yes. Obviously, we can talk about it today. We'll check in with you on how things are going as we continue with this series in, in the coming months and years, et cetera. Um, but, you know, understandably, it's a process that takes time. It's a process that you can be fully committed to without seeing the results of um, the short term. We understand that. But uh, we, you know, it's good to hear that there's a real commitment on, yeah. on the library's end towards it. Yeah, that. I like to say um, equity is not an end goal, it's a constant process. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are hopefully always engaged in that process. All right, well, um, I'd like to move on to, and it's definitely connected to the conversation we've already been having because we've been talking about the responsibility that the library feels towards the community and to be reflective of that community and its values and all that stuff. Every year, you guys put that on the line with Arlington Reads Together. It's a big part of your calendar and of our calendar as well. Um, and that's where, again, you make a reading available to the entire community for a certain amount of time, and then you program a number of events around that issue um, throughout mostly the month of March, I think, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. So um, for us, March is Arlington Reads Together Month, and it is truly one of my favorite months of the year. Um, I don't think March always gets that kind of no, accolade. Right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's not If spring. you're redeeming March, you're doing a good job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And our Arlington Reads Together program was really started as a way to bring the community together through literature to help discuss big ideas and to kind of break down some barriers within the community. Uh, the program uh, begins in the summer months, so the program really began, this year's program, the 2023 Arlington Reads Together program began in the summer of 2022 when a group of volunteers came together to uh, look at book suggestions that were that come in through an online submission form mm -hmm. and think about what book would best serve the community as a, number one, a fun thing to read, and number two, a book that's gonna inspire great conversation, great thinking, great ideas, and uh, we really found it this year. I'm really mm -hmm. excited. Mm -hmm. So this year I did bring some show and tells. Great. <laughs> um, this year our book recommendation is Being Human by Judy Human. Judy Human is a uh, celebrated disability rights activist. Um, and this book is, she's gonna be here. Well, she's gonna be here on Zoom mm -hmm. on March 19th. You're actually gonna be moderating the conversation with her. Yes, We're I'm really excited for that. that for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. Um, there's a lot of reasons why this book was the right book for this time. One of the reasons is that this book is also available in a young reader's edition. So this book is, uh, the young reader's edition is called Rolling Warrior. And this edition is really geared for um, kind of sixth graders and up. So kids who aren't quite ready for an adult book but um, aren't quite but ready for a picture book. Right, yeah. but can tackle the, the subject as well. Yeah, um, Judy Human is a fantastic person and she also inspired a picture book. So we were really happy to find a title and a subject that um, is going to bring light to uh, the disability rights movement for people of all ages in Arlington. Um, so great choice because there's books for all, many different kinds of readers mm -hmm. and it's really the right time. This is the 30 this year is the 30th anniversary of Arlington's Disability Commission and we've been lucky enough to partner with the Arlington's Disability Commission on a number of the um, events that will be happening during the month. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic lineup of events. Um, but one of the ones I'm most excited for is a panel discussion with, dis with past and present disability rights commission, excuse me, disability commission members. Mm. Um, I don't think many of us know I'm an able-bodied person and I don't really know what the experience of being disabled in Arlington is like. And mm -hmm. I'm excited to open that window for some of our residents and to better understand where we as a community can improve. Um, what is the experience like? How has the experience changed over time? Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited to learn about my neighbors, learn about the struggles, learn about the successes and learn about how I can just know more about my neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. You know, I'm really struck by the fact that you, you have three items on show and yeah. tell there where usually there would be just the one, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. As I think about previous Arlington Reads Together reads, they have been kind of the adult version, so to speak, of yep. whatever that book was. Yeah. This is really 
great that you can address different segments of the reading audience and of the, of the community in this way, kind of speaking more directly to, to them through these different, uh, these different books. Was that, um, was that just a happy uh, circumstance coming a after you'd made the decision or was that actually part of the decision itself? We actually had notes about the titles, all of the titles that we were discussing and then we did include, hey, there's a lot of other ways for people to access content about Judy Human and the disability rights movement in America. So yeah, that was something that we noted. And I would say, um, as we were making choices about the titles, uh, Being Human had that plus one already. Because um, when we think about building an inclusive program, I want to include all members of our community. And finding access points for everyone into a topic is important for us in Arlington Reads Together. Mm -hmm. So we are, um, you know, we will, we will be soon in the month of March and in the middle of these activities. Yeah. Um, and I think that obviously a lot of your own attention and a lot of the attention of the staff here, et cetera, is all geared around this. Um, but of course, things will go on on the other side of yep. that. And I just wanted to ask you, because we have a few minutes and we can just, just thinking about how the rest of this year and even on from here, because now you've been in the job for, uh, you know, for a number of months. And again, seems like a lot longer, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you do have, if not, I don't know if you have full staffing, but you have that vital position of yep. assistant library director now filled. You can really start, I think, to be putting your own mark on this place. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to us just a little bit about what kinds of things are going to be, you know, b beyond what you've already mentioned today, going to be, you know, part of the, the kind of Anna Litton yeah. uh, approach to directorship here. So there are two big projects on uh, the plate for the spring months. Um, I am looking forward to creating more opportunities to hear from our community members. And the first way I'm looking forward to doing this is by creating an opportunity for community members to submit program ideas. I really, we cannot rely on library staff knowing all mm -hmm. the time what the right programs are. Mm -hmm. um, the Rainbow Readers program, I think, was actually the idea germinated from a conversation with a community member. Mm -hmm. And we need to create more ways for community members to communicate with us about what types of programs we should be offering, what types of collections, what can we do to really meet your needs. Mm -hmm. And the best way to know about that would be to ask our community members. So creating some of those um, ways, communication in options. We have a lot of ways that we communicate out, mm -hmm. but we're looking to have add more ways for people to tell us what do they want to see in the mm -hmm. library. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a big project moving forward. We're also looking forward to creating more opportunities to bring the library outside of the library. Um, Earlier today, I was communicating with some staff at Arlington Eats. We're looking forward to setting up a library card table at the, their new market once a month or so mm -hmm. and helping uh, visitors at Arlington Eats sign up for a library card, learn about the resources that are available here. I like to say, your library card is your most powerful card in your wallet. <laughs> Where, what other card in your wallet gives you so much yeah. for free? Yeah. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to getting outside making those connections with maybe people who aren't using the library, uh, finding out why, what can we do so that the library is a more attractive location for you, mm -hmm. and that you really understand what your local public library can bring to you. So I have been, I'm going to pick up the thread uh, of something that I have kind of been asking you about over time, mm -hmm. and that is COVID was huge for all of us, yes. individuals, families, institutions, um, and made changes that are still going to be going on in our lives as we move away from, from COVID. You know, what is the equivalent of that here at the library? So what are a couple of the things that happened because COVID happened that you learned lessons from or realized that you had tapped into something et cetera, and that are now going to be more permanent aspects of the way the library provides its services. Yeah, so when you were talking about what's changed since COVID, um, the piece that you didn't mention was community. And mm -hmm. I think that we see now more than ever, people are looking for those community connections. So our ability to be a place where everyone in town is welcome 
there's you don't have to pay anything. There's nothing. There's not very much to buy here. Right. You can there's buy no some barrier books. to entry whatsoever. There's no whatsoever. barrier to entry. Yeah. And we want to be that place where if you are looking for community connections, you can come and sit down here in our beautiful reading room and you're going to see a neighbor. Maybe you and the neighbor are reading the same book. Maybe it's time to say, I love that. Let's have that conversation. Um, maybe it's not. Maybe it's downstairs. You're chatting with another parent of small children. Mm -hmm. um, so that piece, the piece that we have left with, that to me, I see as being so vital, is our place where our neighbors can make connections. Mm -hmm. uh, the other piece that we have learned coming, uh, I'm, I don't remember what to say, going yeah, past know, COVID, know, but in I the post-COVID years. We have to be very careful. Yeah, about it, people, of course, have discovered the library. There were many people who discovered the library in COVID during those COVID times in a way they hadn't uh, before. Uh, 2022, was our largest circulation year ever. We circulated uh, over 936,000 items. Um, we are a community of 46,000, so we are, it's a <laughs> lot of books per person. Um, we are one of the highest circulating libraries in the Commonwealth, um, and Arlingtonians really wanna read. Uh, we, of course, circulate other items. We circulate movies, we circulate our very, popular Library of Things, things collection, yeah. but most of the, the items that people check out from the library are books. And it is a true joy and pleasure to make sure our community has access to the books they want to read, mm -hmm. and a lot of them. Um, it's just really what an honor to support the community like that mm -hmm. in providing spaces, in providing collections. It's it's exciting. So you it sounds like you're dub, you know, coming out again. I'm going to say the words coming out of COVID. <laughs> um, it, it sounds like you're doubling down on the on a lot of the things that have made you already a special place here. Yeah. I'm also curious though whether uh, at this point there are actual procedural or process changes that came about because of COVID that are also just part of the library's way of doing things now. Absolutely, uh, a great example was something that the Minuteman Library uh, membership actually just passed a new um, policy that will give people who sign up for an online library card, anyone can sign up for an online library card, you don't even need to come into our building. Uh, it makes that online sign up essentially analogous to the same sign up you would have if you came into the building. Mm -hmm. So if you are, you're busy, you're working full time, you don't have a lot of time to come into the library, but you're really fond of using um, eBooks from the library or checking out movies from the library from our uh, Canopy tool, you can sign up for your card online and your card doesn't expire for four years, just like a library card that you would get when you would come in mm -hmm. here. So we're, you're able to access all of our digital materials without ever stepping through our doors. Um, we're happy to make that change and better support so, so many patrons who use our online resources but don't need to come into the library. Mm -hmm. And I have to just imagine that the grab bags that were so popular that you guys kind of assembled for mm -hmm. families a lot of the time, because yep. they would contain lots of different books of mm -hmm. different sorts, et cetera. And people could basically just come in, grab the bag and go home and, you know, like, like a little Christmas thing or yep. whatever, just, you know, just see what goodies were inside, et cetera. And I know that was very popular. I remember this room was just filled, full, chock filled. block yes. of those bags. Tables and tables of bags. For a couple of, of years, yeah. 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 So I imagine that got a, like, do you try and, is there a way to keep that kind of thing going? Oh yeah, or? that program is still available. Mm -hmm. We have, there's been a big drop off in the number of people requesting um, those grab bags, but we certainly fill grab bag requests mm -hmm. um, still to this day. Um, I do think that people miss the physical library. Yeah. So now that they're able to come in, that those requests have really gone right, down. Right, because people just come in and yeah. do, do that here, yeah. basically. Um, but that program is never gonna go away. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now that grab bags are here, they're here to stay. Um, not as much use, but mm -hmm. people will, yeah, it's a great service. All right, well, we only have a couple minutes left. I'm wondering, like, obviously we've covered a lot of ground, we always do. Um, but I'm wondering if there's anything that you'd like to mention that we haven't? Yeah. Um, I just thought I hope that everybody comes to the library this week, that there's something for everyone here at Robinson Fox Branch Libraries, and we are always excited to see visitors. All right. Well, 
Congratulations to you on a couple of things. First of all, the ten, you know, the fact that you've made it this far, because <laughs> um, I know it was th that that was tough. You were doing a couple of jobs at least, and um, anyway, just getting here. Kudos to you. Kudos on being fully staffed or closer to, and uh, and again, just being able to now spend your energies on the things that you took this job for, I'm sure. Yeah, it's very um, exciting. So I uh, look forward to continuing to chart the progress. I look forward to our event that we will do here uh, in, in the coming months. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I have, of course, been speaking with Anna Litton. She is the director of our libraries here in town. And this has been Check It Out. So thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate Anna's time. We really do. And we appreciate yours as well. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.